Psalm 8, verse 4, all the way to verse 5. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast crowned him with glory and with honor. Psalm 8, verse 4, all the way to verse 5. You crowned him with glory and honor. Very quickly tonight, I speak on the subject, the path of honor. The path of honor. It is our year of greater glory. Whenever we mention the glory of God, one of the major components of glory is honor. The glory of God refers to the honor of God, the dignity of God. So when we say it is our year of greater glory, we mean to say it is a year of greater honor that we have been honored before. But we should be set to see honor like never before. came across something yesterday that some people wrote, I don't know them from anywhere. They say 12 facts about Dr. Pastor Paul and Angel. Anybody saw it? And uploaded it on their own. I don't know who they are. I've never met them. In fact, we heard later on that they are not based in Nigeria at all. They are in the U.S. You haven't seen anything as accurate as that. From everything about university, every single thing. Amazing. Our year of greater honor. Psalm 8 verse 4 and 5 said, When God created man, Verse 5, for thou hast made him a little lower than the, the reward there is Elohim and has crowned him with glory and honor. So our destiny is a destiny of honor, a destiny of glory and honor. Romans chapter 8 verse 30. Corroborates that. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he called, and whom he called, them he justified, and them whom he justified, them he glorified, or them he honored. So God created us for honor. He justified us for honor. The question is. Before the question, what does honor refer to? Honor first refers to respect or esteem. High respect, great esteem. An honorable person is a highly respectable person or greatly esteemable. Honor also refers to opportunity. Thank you for the honor you've given to me to meet so and so person. Thank you for the honor given to me to step here. Honor refers to opportunity. And honor also is symbolism of royalty. God 
has created us for high esteem, high respect, great esteem, opportunity, royalty. Then it is an abomination for your life to be swallowed up in shame. It is improper to be buried in reproach. It is not correct to live a life of ignominy, a life of opprobrium. It's not correct. It's not correct to live a life of mockery, a life of mockery, a life of shame. It's not correct. So what do we do to hit the path of honor? How, what is the pathway to honor? Number one is dwelling in his presence. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 27. First Chronicles 16 27 the Bible said glory and honor are in his presence glory and honor are in his presence strength and gladness are in his place glory and honor are in his presence so if you can locate yourself in his presence you cannot escape honor everyone who is a carrier of his presence is a carrier of honor If they can feel his presence around your life, they must, they must feel the, his honor on you. Some of the most honorable people on the face of the earth are those who carry God's presence like nothing. Honor is in his presence, dwelling in his presence. Number two, Waiting in his service. Waiting in his service. Proverbs 27 verse 18. The Bible said, Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Waiting on the master, running his errand, being available, he puts honor on your life. Am I communicating at all? Some people run mad as to why servants of God are highly honored. It's not their fault. The man of God, Billy Graham, in the days of his life, they received him at the airport in, 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 in England, at the same place of the airport where the queen was received. He had such an honor from his master that he served until... They received him in the same place. He had a state burial like a United, a U.S. presidential burial. That was the kind of burial he had when he passed on at the age of 99. Oh no. Wait on your master. Irrespective of how people call you stupid or foolish. Dash yourself, donate yourself, hand over your life to Jehovah, be lost in his service. And honor will become natural. You don't have to be a full-time pastor to experience honor. All you need is to serve him from your heart. And you will experience honor. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loudest amen. We have been to places before where nobody knew us. And honor located us. We're flying somewhere, I think around Germany or so. And my wife and I were at the back of the, of the, of the, of the row. All the people in front of us were Caucasians. At the back of the row. And the man, the Caucasian man, 
checking people in, looked across the row and beckoned to me and said, good man, come. Let me check you in first. And we went across all the people lined up in front of us. He never knew us from nowhere. He didn't know the class of ticket or whatever we were sitting. He just looked and honor was located. We sat in the aircraft one day and some people were arguing about sitting position. And the woman came straight to where I was sitting in the front. We we're from Germany, from, from, from Frankfurt, I think, to, to Tel Aviv. And the woman looked at me and said, why is my husband's seat number 9A or something and then my own seat is on the other, I was looking at her, wondering what, what is my concern with your sitting position. Then the husband said, when they were arguing of, about what happened, she said, let her go and ask the owner, aircraft owner, Yabadaya. Big passenger aircraft that I am the owner. The husband said, why don't you ask the, the air hostess or flight steward? He said, no, I will go to the owner straight. Something in her eyes saw ownership. Me too, I was a passenger. He that waited on his master shall be honored. Everybody who has experienced any form of reproach as you wait on the Lord in fasting and prayer and also wait in his work, I see honor coming your way. I see honor coming your way. You believe and shall the Lord is. Amen. What is the path to honor? Number three. Scriptural understanding. Psalm 49 verse 20. He said, man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perish. Man that is in honor and does not understand is like the beast that perish. No wonder he said in Proverbs 21 verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The man who wanders from the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Is God speaking to anybody here? Scriptural understanding. To have honor, you must think honor. You must, you must understand that you are a chosen generation. You must understand that you are a royal priesthood. You must understand that you are a peculiar person. You must understand that you are not inferior to anybody under heaven. You must understand that you are not disadvantaged on, on, on account of color on account of which country you came from, on the account of your sex, on the account of your age, you must understand, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like beast that perisheth. Not to know where God has placed you is not humility. It borders on stupidity. Am I communicating at all? What God has, what God, where God has placed you, the status, whatever God has in mind for your life, thinking yourself lower than that, it's not humility. Man that is in honor and understand it not. So you must renovate your mentality to upgrade your reality. What I said, you must renovate your mentality to upgrade your reality. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
You renew your mind, you upgrade your life. Don't let it. Some of us are victims of people who talk to us when we're children. And they said nothing good can ever come out of you. You can never become good. You can never achieve anything. You are just nothing. Maybe your mother, maybe your uncle, maybe somebody. And, and you grew up believing that nothing good can come out of you. And you exist like a shadow of yourself. And you exist like always apologizing, saying sorry to everybody, even if there was no need for, for sorry. Am I communicating? But today I declare that that thing be blasted out of your mind. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renovate your mentality to upgrade your reality. You are not a liability, you are an asset. You are not a burden, you are a blessing to your generation. Oh no, you see? What you think inside reflects outside. Your internal environment creates your outer, outer external world. People cannot respect you beyond where you rate yourself. Am I communicating at all? That is why the place of scriptural understanding is important. I have not, been, I have not seen anybody to successfully look down on me worldwide. Why? Because I move with audacity. Inside there is a confidence that is reflected in the steps. Am I communicating at all? Man that is in honor and knoweth it not is like the beast that perish. That was scriptural understanding. Number four is mentoral impartation from faithful followership. Mentoral impartation from faithful followership. That is you follow faithfully until some, something from whom you follow drops on you. Numbers 27 verse 18 to verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. And set him before Elias the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And you shall put some of your honor upon him. Joshua, the honor, Moses, the honor I have given to you. Your faithful boy called Joshua, who has served you and served very well. The one that remained when everybody was just distracted. The one that remained in the tabernacle in Exodus 33 and in verse 11. Take it some of your honor and put upon him. When you serve very well. People begin to see the honor of your father on your life. They begin to see the honor of your mentor. The honor of your pastor on your life. When you serve very well. When you are heart to heart connected. They see that honor on your life. A man told me yesterday. Uh, he said um, he went to the market. He would say market or somewhere. And somebody looked at him and said. Um, do you know Dr. Pastor Paul Lenenche? He said, yes, that is my pastor. He said, how did he say it, Dr. Mr. Lenenche? He said, I can see him all over you. All over you. Everything, everything, everything. You know him? He said, that is my pastor. He said, I can. You know the way somebody has if someone is wearing another person. God told Moses, Put your honor, what I put in you, put upon Joshua. So that the doors that can open for you, let it open for Joshua. I prophesy to somebody, whatever grace and help and honor and opportunity God has put upon us is coming upon you right now. As, as, as a dedicated, committed person of this commission is coming upon you right now. Every door that opens for us will begin to open for you. Where they cannot turn us back, they cannot turn you back. In the name of Jesus, you believe that shall be louder, say amen. And somebody will be back here tomorrow to testify that the door supernaturally opened. Shout the loudest, amen. 
tell somebody by yourself, I say something is coming on you tonight. Something is dropping on you tonight. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Faithful mentoral impartation from faithful followership. Number one is dwelling in, in God's presence. Number two is waiting in his service. Number three is scriptural understanding that changed your mind. That tells you, no, I'm not like, I'm not just like that. You know, there is something about reading scriptures that changes your life. Scriptural understanding and then mentoral impartation from faithful followership. And number five, walking in God's plan. Walking in God's plan for your life. Or call it walking in his calling. Walking in God's calling for your life. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4. He said, no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called. Inside your calling is your honor. And inside your calling is your color. When I say calling, some people say I'm just talking of evangelist, pastor, apostle. That is part of it, but it's not all. If God has called you to do business, and you are struggling in politics. No color there. If God has called you. Maybe to impart people's lives. Via instruction like a teacher in the classroom. Or a lecturer. A professor of some sort. And you are struggling to do business. You won't have color there. Hello. Even in business, I was talking to a lawyer the other day. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. And you know, most lawyers do property, uh, the legal fee and all that. I said, do you do property? He said, never. That he tried it once, but then he realized that is not his line. That his line is the raw court. Take him to court. <laughs> Just take him to court, let him argue it and shoot it out with somebody. You see, if he's talking in court, if pin drop, you will hear the sound. That his gift is in that realm. That he tried the other one, it's not working. Am I communicating? And so, that is, he, he realized that his realm is not there. Don't because you are in Abuja do property, because everybody is doing property. send you to do property and you be begin to do property you might come to the point where yourself might become property at the end you know some people found land for Billy Graham that I just talked about and they say can we build a university for you the land is available everything is available money is available let us build a university for you and call it Billy Graham University, like Cora Robert University. He told them, he said, when God was calling me, he never mentioned university. They said, you are not to bring any money. He said, university is not part of my calling. Don't do what God has not called you to do. Papo Yedeko said, if God did not ask you to build hospital, and you build hospital, you may be the, become the first patient <laughs> in the hospital because of struggle to make it work when God did not call you to work it. Somebody say amen. If calling is your color, I prophesy to somebody today that territory where you will be celebrated, God will show it to you. Say that amen like a believer.